in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, one of the greatest honors of my entire life has been raising our children. We have twin boys. They are now 21 years old. Doesn't it go by so fast, by the way? And I'm telling you the greatest honor of my entire life and Denise would, would say the same thing. What a privilege. Any parents just grateful for the privilege of parenting? Some of you guys are like, not right now, not in this season. <laughs> but I, I, I've been zoning on this one. I wanna start with a verse. It's 3 John 1, 4. This has been hitting me. It says, I could have no greater joy. Someone say joy. Yeah. Than, than to hear that my children are following the truth. And I've been zoning in on this. You know, our kids are 21, and we always had this goal as we were raising our kids. When they left the house, that they, you know, when they, when they had the freedom, if, when they could, they would want to come home and hang out with us. We wanted them to experience God's best. We wanted them to fly, man, to just enjoy life and just be good stewards of all the gifts that God had given them. And here they are, 21, and... You know, one of our kids got married, moved back from California on Friday. We went on a date night. It was like my wife and I and like my son and my daughter-in-law. And we just partied, man. We just had a good time. I just love hanging out with them. And just to see how they're walking in life and honoring God. And of course, they're not perfect. No one is. But man, there's this sense like they're following God's best. And there's something in my soul, deep in my soul, that comes alive. And I'm like, dude, like I'm alive. Like there's this deep pleasure that happens in my heart. I was just, uh, my other son came home, and me and him, we just grabbed a little brunch together and read the Bible, our daily reading in Proverbs 23 yesterday, and I was just amazed by God's wisdom through my son as he's, we're like going back and forth reading, and like I'm getting his take on the scripture, and just nuggets of wisdom are just dropping through this young man. And I'm gonna tell you, he's not perfect, but <laughs> believe me, he's not perfect, but man, God's, God's beauty through them so stoked, there's something in my heart that just explodes. There's another verse that I'll give to you as we begin this message in Proverbs 23, verse 24. Listen to this, man, and dads, where my dad's at real quick, raise your hand. This, check this out, see if this doesn't resonate in your soul. The father of godly children has cause for joy. What a pleasure to have children who are wise. Isn't it interesting? Like something, there's a deep pleasure in my soul when you see your children walking in truth. They're, they're growing in wisdom. But can I just tell you, it didn't start out that way. In fact, all parents, go back to the very first day your kids came flying out of the womb, man. <laughs> just, just think of that for a second. Right away. They weren't wise. In fact, this will blow your mind. They knew nothing. Nothing. They, what did they do? Ah! They just screamed. And then they grew up and they were a toddler and they were selfish. And they're like, uh, mine, mine, mine. I, mine, mine, mine. Ah! Like, we were joking around. It would have been so much better if God would have just made it where the kids come out of the womb, you know, talking from day one. <laughs> been the best. Like, yo, pops, I just dropped a two spot. Just need you to clean me up real quick, and I'm good to go. You know what I'm saying? Instead, it's like, ah! You know, they just lose their mind. And what I wrote in my notes is, is this, is they're, they're selfish, screaming. What they really need is the scriptures and the spirit to move from foolish to wise. When they first come out, it's so crazy. I, there's a picture of a, this blank canvas, and this is what I wanted to tell you, man. Number one, if you're a note taker, there's power in parenting, and if you look at this, this is how our kids come out, complete blank. Listen, your kids are a canvas, and our privilege as parents is to begin painting like Picasso. You and I have the privilege of taking the scripture and the spirit from day one by God's grace and giving them a paradigm, a, a, a pattern to follow. And, and Blaise just said this. He said, he said, it's so cool because as you model, as you give us the scriptures, we have a, a painting, and now when we get sent out, at least I have a template on how life can work. 
And it's powerful. It's a powerful picture we as parents get to present. And I've seen this, how this works, man. I mean, again, this is by God's grace. I was at a grad party yesterday and I, and I was celebrating this young woman who is way mature and blessed beyond her years, but when you track it down, it was the parents that surrendered their life to Christ, got in the scriptures every day, filled with the spirit, were modeling and encouraging her all the way throughout 18 years, and you get to see this beautiful, young, godly woman that's about to be sent into the world, powerful. Someone say power. But you know what? Tragically, there's power on the other side. Because here's the, here's the truth, as parents, we have that clean slate, the canvas, but so many of us have no idea about the scriptures and how to do it God's way. We're just trying to do our best. We didn't learn from our parents, and guess what do we do? We're just doing our best, and we're painting a portrait that has nothing to do with God's best for their life. And now you send out that child in the same way that was so beautiful. Now it's the exact opposite. Do you see the power? There's power each way. And the question is, for you and I, what portrait are we painting? There's, there's power. I wanted, to, I wanted to start with this idea of power. Listen, if you're a parent in here, I want you to see this verse, Psalm 127.3. It's so good. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Listen, your kids are God's kids, and you're called to steward and, can, and begin to paint a picture and fill in the lines for them. You can be like Picasso, Bob Ross, and begin to do this. Ephesians 2.10 says this, we are God's masterpiece. Do you know your children are poems, they're paintings in motion? It's so cool, and we have the privilege of partnering with God to see that, that pattern, that picture be built. I was, um, as I mentioned, I was serving in kids the last couple weeks, and I got to see this <laughs> a picture of this, and you ever hear of the whole thing of nature and nurture? Yeah, look at these guys, man, so fun. And it's just, it's holy chaos. You see the middle picture? That's, that's basically what it is. And you've heard nature and nurture, right? And it inter- it's so fascinating, that's why I love that. Who needs sociology class? Just start serving and love kids. You don't need to pay a bunch of money, just observe humans. And what's interesting is you see Nature and nurture. Nature, how God pre-programs all of us, different demeanors, personalities, that kind of stuff. You get some people that are just straight stubborn. You know, by the way, the stubborn kids are the future leaders. You just gotta sanctify the stubbornness. So you you have that. And then you have, you know, the kind of chill kids and that kind of stuff. You have the the pre-programmed nurture. And then you have nature. And what is that? That is how the kids are formed through their upbringing mainly through the parents. It's a fascinating thing. And I I wanted to say this. (laughs) I wrote this literally in my notes. Parents, you're doing an amazing job. (laughs) Parents, I'm telling you, yes, it's holy chaos, but I was watching and observing. I'm looking at these kids. They were were so fun. And you're doing (laughs) an amazing job. It was so funny with uh, when snack time would come up all the kids would find the biggest canister they can because they had the puffs, you know, they were delegating the, distributing the puffs, and the kids would just find whatever they, they can to put them in there. And then, you know, then one person that was distributing the puffs was out, but the other pe- person on the other side of the room still had some. So one by one, the, one, the kids would figure that out and be like, see you later, you know, like, and they would like go over here, and then the kids would go and follow, and it was, so, I was just studying kids the whole time. Nature, nurture, and how powerful it is when we raise these children. It was funny, uh, during cleanup time, towards the end, the kids know that the parents are about to pick them up. And so some of the kids would you know, do the full clean job, but a lot of them would be like, ah, Pavlov's dog. <laughs> as soon as we clean, now the parents are coming. So someone would like peel off right there. And I'm just observing nature, nurture, and the power that we have as parents, we're, we're painting this picture. Power for good, power for not so good. And let me just pause right here, this was on my heart. If you've been raised by parents that for whatever reason were disconnected from God and never gave 
you a picture to follow that is honoring to God. Let's forgive, not put it on them, but I also would say this, you have an opportunity to paint a different picture moving forward. You can change the trajectory of generations if you'll apply this message in your life. No shame, no blame. Listen, all of us have failed. There's no perfect parent at all, and God is working all things together for the good of those who love him. Powerful. Someone say power. Number two, purpose. The purpose of parenting, and I mean, I could go on and on and on about the purpose. Let me give you the number one biblical purpose that I found in the scriptures, Malachi chapter two, starting in verse 15. Watch this. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? In body and spirit, you are his. And what does God want? In other words, what does God want out of parenting? You guys ready for this? Godly children from your union. Jot it down. The purpose of parenting, he brings man and woman together. And, and what is this? This idea, God wants godly children. Later on, in the very next verse, he says he hates divorce. Why? Because the godly children isn't the natural result. And one, once again, God can still perform miracles through divorce. I'm proof of that. So don't go that way, but that's the idea, godly children. And let me just say, side note of this purpose one, identity, identity, write it down. Parents, your purpose is to get God's identity into your kids, where their ID is in JC only. Here's what your kids are fighting right now. Their identity being in how they look, how they dress, what other people say about them on social media, what they have, what they don't have. And if we're not careful to set what it is, godly children who know their identity, they are gonna be looking for their identity in so many other things their entire life and never arrive. Someone say identity. Identity in what Christ says. They are loved, they're accepted, they're chosen, they're called, not based on their performance, but based on what Christ has done. I was talking to two of these young track stars in our area that go to the church, and I was just speaking to them on identity, and I just said, you know, listen, win, lose, or draw in the race, you are chosen. You, you, you're not, your identity is not formed on if you win the race. Now, listen, you have a gift to run, so maximize the gift maximize the gift, but don't allow that to be your identity. Why? Because on, on race day when you win, yeah, everybody loves me, this rules. Bad day, you lose, I suck, this is terrible, no one likes me. But when you go, you know what? I'm gonna maximize the moment and I'm all in for Jesus, but at the end of the day, my identity is in Christ. It's immovable. It's the most powerful place to be in. And what I see today is when we grow up as kids and we never know who we are, we're floundering. And God wants to speak identity into our hearts. <laughs> the beauty is it's an ongoing revelation too. I told the girls that, you know, there'll be some insecurities that come in, you address it. That's not who I am. I know who I am in Christ. Godly children, <laughs> number two, specifically from the Proverbs, you want another one? I'm just giving you way too much, I know. But write this down. Part of our purpose as a parent is moving our children from foolish to wise. <laughs> foolish to wise. Proverbs 17, 21 says, it's painful <laughs> to be the parent of a fool. <laughs> There's no joy for the father of a rebel. And then in Proverbs 18, 2, this is, all of us as humans, so don't just point at your kids. Look at this. Fools have no interest in, in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. <laughs> it's so true, isn't it? So our role, our privilege as we help God paint the picture and set the pattern is to help them move from foolish to wise. And I thought I would illustrate in this way I was serving in the toddler room, and so this is like probably my favorite thing in the world on training children, moving from foolish to wise. 
You guys know what I'm talking about? Like, and now it's deluxe. It used to only have like four shapes on the top. Now they got shapes everywhere. I mean, it's like high advanced training children. And so in my hand, here's what happens. The kids are, get stoked about it, you know? And they grab one of the shapes and my privilege is helping guide their hand into the right place. And you have some kids that they're taking the round, you know, red circle, trying to jam it in the star, you know? And some of those kids that are suffering, like, and I'm looking at them like, brethren, it's not gonna work, you know what I'm saying? It's like, let me lovingly guide and direct you, right? And it's so wild because even the temperaments of different kids, and then you have some that, that I'm playing with and they're kind of, which one is it, Dad? You know, PT, which one? You know, and they're kind of looking. And then when you guide their hand from, you know, foolish trying to jam it to wise, and they, and they like drop it, they finally drop it in the circle, you know? They're like, I rule. This is awesome. I conquered the world, you know? And we celebrate and we have a good time, you know? And, and I just thought to myself, my goodness, that's raising kids right there. Our job is to lovingly guide them into God's best, the, the round red circle for their life. And when they're stubborn, to lovingly and in, you know, directly <laughs> encourage them onto the right track. Foolish to wise, foolish to wise. And then uh, here's another one I wanted you to jot down. Purpose in parenting. We're stewarding souls for seasons. We're steward. This is a great sobering idea again. God, listen, just let me just put this plain. God gave you humans to care for. Humans. I remember, dude, like, you know, again, we had twins. So put yourself in my shoes. I was playing PlayStation one day and I was a parent the next day. Here you go. Here are my kids. Take care of them for 18 years and good luck, buddy. Stewarding souls, helping them understand who they are and their gifting, their identity, and you know, stewarding the right way. And then there's seasons, and I just want to break these seasons down real quick and just give you one quick word of wisdom, if you don't mind. Four seasons in parenting. You guys ready for them? Say I'm ready. Caretaker. Where am I? So caretaker is that early stage where you are feeding, burping, and wiping. Where my where are my caretakers right now? You're in the heat of the moment right now. No sleep, just trying to stay sane. Let's pray. Everybody extend your hand their way right now in Jesus' name. Care for them. It's caretaker. And you gotta have courage to be a caretaker, right? Next is the commando, and that's from like toddler stage all the way through grade school. And that's caretaker, man. Again, you are, you're, you're helping them paint the picture on chores and how to share and how to do their homework on time and, and you're caring, you're, it's, a, it's a very, I love moms, by the way. You guys are so uniquely crafted for this. Let's give it up for the moms real quick because y'all are amazing, amazing caretakers. What, what I find interesting, and this is, it happens every time at the end of a school year <laughs> where you're at in your, in your season, and some are like, dude, uh, can't wait for my kids to come home. It's gonna be an awesome summer. Isn't it about right now? Some of you moms, like half you moms are like, this is rules. I miss my kids. We're gonna have a good time. And, the, and there's another half they are like, why do we have to have summer? Like, <laughs> put them back in school. You know, it's like, okay, maybe not. So then you move to the coach, okay? That's number three, the coach. And the coach is kind of like that middle school, high school type season, where you're kind of, you know, sometimes you gotta get in their face a little bit and, and challenge them a bit, and you're supporting them like a good coach. And by the way, a good coach knows their athletes and know how to motivate them. It's not just one trick pony. And when you have children with different temperaments, you have to have wisdom and discernment from the Lord how to coach. And then you get to the final stage what I call the consultant. And I actually put in parentheses the invited consultant. And that's where I'm at in our season. And this started for us about junior, senior year, where it was like, man, by God's grace, we've invested the scriptures by the spirit into our children every day, orange Bible every night, and, and trying to model to the best of our ability what it is. But eventually, you gotta launch them and give them freedom. And this is how I express it to my adult children now. I wanna be, I wanna have your back. I wanna support you. 
but I wanna be an invited guest consultant into your life. I don't wanna be the weirdo parent trying to insert myself into your life. And by God's grace, they do. They, they invite me into it. Hey, Dad, what do you think about this? Hey, can you give me some wisdom here? And I'm their biggest cheerleader, and I would encourage them throughout the journey. Consultant. Now, now a quick word for parents that I would just lovingly say, sense the season. Here's what I mean by that. There's some parents that have children in the high school age and you're still the caretaker in the commando. Can I just tell you, you're killing your kids. Here's what I would say, simple thing. Have them set their own alarm. Have them make their own bed. Don't make their bed. Because here's what happens a lot of times. All of a sudden, you know, it's, it's like, it's like control, 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 and you have the right heart, don't get, hear me wrong, the right heart, control, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> in, in a matter of two days, they're sent to college, so you're over-parenting and then under-parenting, and that's just freedom, and shotgunning kids out. My, one of my first roommates had no clue how to cook, clean, wake up, nothing, and his mom was an amazing woman of God, but she forgot that there's seasons when you raise your kids. I had to pick up the slack. I think I'm, I need, I'm still bitter because I need to fresh start that guy. <laughs> Stuff's just strewn about, you know? Okay. Here's where I really wanted to get to. This is the key to the message, and I want you to tune in. If you lost everything I just said, it's okay. I'm gonna pray an anointing that will still come back because that was important, but here is number three. I, I want you to have a new paradigm for parenting. And here's, here's, it's a very simple phrase. I learned this years ago. It has changed the game for us. And, and I'm praying generations would be changed by this one phrase. Here it is. It's a new paradigm. It's a biblical paradigm. And I wanna give it to you in one phrase. And, and if you know this, say it out loud with me. Okay, here it is. Tons of love, tons of discipline, and consistency throughout. Let's say it again, tons of love, tons of discipline, and consistency throughout. Listen, this is the biblical paradigm for parenting that if you walk in it, I promise you, by God's grace, it will change generations. It's the Bible's way. Think about this for a second. God created us, and then he gave us the game plan. This works. Let's start with love. God is love, by the way. <laughs> The number one thing our children need, nurturing, loving. And, and, and here's what I would also say. What is your child's, what is my child's love language in the season? And I mean, we talk about this in, in, in marriage, which is great, right? What are the five love languages? You guys remember them? Physical touch. And think about when your kids are growing up. They did a study, it was wild. When the Soviet Union first uh, got conquered, they put all these kids into this refuge and there was 25 kids for one caretaker and a lot of times they never got a touch. And because of that lack of touch, they had mental problems, physical problems, and, and it was absolute chaos. Why? Because they weren't loved as children. They didn't have this, this touch, this comfort with them. What I've noticed with our children right now as more adults, their love language is words of affirmation. Simple. When's the last time I look into Blaze's eyes, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm stinking proud of you, bro. When's the last time you just honestly and authentically just looked at your children and just said, man, I'm super proud of you. You have what it takes. I got your back. These words of, off, of affirmation. And it's not lame like, well, the pastor told me to go tell my kid. It's authentic. This, this love language Total hack, by the way, as a, as a family. Super simple, a way to have words of affirmation. A, have dinner with your family. Fight for dinner with your family. And as you're having dinner, just encourage the person to the right. I love a round table. A words of affirmation, it's a genuine, hey man, I celebrate you. I just like to be around you. So simple. The person to the, the next. Hey, I've just noticed that you've been really polite with your please and thank you. I love that. Speak to the character, affirm the character. It's love. I thank God for my mom who just modeled love and all my parents modeled so well for me in different areas. 
And my mom specifically, she modeled and taught me to love the outcast, the overlooked, and the, and the hurting all throughout my childhood to prepare me to be a pastor. I had no idea that I was gonna be a pastor. And, and she modeled it. And I remember specifically in high school, there was this poor girl who, you know, the acne and, you know, it, she, it was, she just had a tough time. And I remember my mom saying, you love that girl every single day. You encourage her. And I'm telling you, that's game changer, man. If you can live that with your kids and model that, total game changer. Gifts, acts of service. Moms, by the way, you guys are amazing at acts of service. Love. Someone say love. I mean, I could go on and on about this love, but it is crucial. Lead with love. Oh, yeah, I forgot one of my favorite ones. How do kids spell love, by the way? T I M E. Fight for unhurried time with your children. Get your iCal out, put it in there, create space, unhurried time with your children. Okay, I gotta move to the second part. Tons of love, but then tons of, <laughs> tons of discipline. You're all like, man, can we skip that part? <laughs> here's the tragedy, and here's what I found. That's why the paradigm is so crucial that all three parts are in play, because here's what I've found. A lot of us parents, we thrive in loving our kids, but if we're honest, I don't really like the discipline part. Maybe I have a bad taste in my mouth how I was disciplined. I'm never gonna spank my kids. I'm never gonna discipline them. And so what ends up happening, I love, love, love my kids, but there's no discipline. And what I've found, tragically, those type of kids that are raised like that, most often, the result, they're spoiled, many times lazy, expecting other people to do stuff for them, and it's tragic. But then I've also seen on the other side, the people that are like, <laughs> discipline, yeah, preach it, brethren, let's go, you know, it's like, and they don't have love. Here's what I've also found. We raise children, if it's all discipline with no love, we, raise, we have a tendency to raise angry and bitter children, resentful children. But if it's love and discipline, and then we're consistent, listen, it's not foolproof because you're still dealing with humans, but you're gonna have a much better chance to raise godly children in an ungodly world. Discipline. I wanna make sure that you're not thinking that I drew this up or it's Todd speaking, so I wanna give you the word of God that you've been reading when it talks about discipline. First one, Proverbs 19, 18. You ready? Proverbs 19, 18. Discipline your children while there is hope. Otherwise, you will ruin their lives. Any parents like, I can't wait to ruin my kid's life. Yes. <laughs> hey, man, this is what God says. Number two, Proverbs 23, 13. Watch this. Don't fail to discipline your children. The rod, we're gonna get to this, the rod of punishment won't kill them. Wow. Proverbs 23, 14. Physical discipline may well save them from death. You guys want another one? You're like, no, no. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you anyways. Proverbs 29, 17. Discipline your children and they'll give you peace of mind and make your heart glad. I always think of the parent in the line at the grocery store with the kids losing their mind. You know, give me the gum, give me the gum. I need the potato chips. You know, it's like, oh, my heart. You want your peace of mind and your heart glad? Learn how to discipline your children. Last one, Proverbs 22, 15. A youngster's heart is filled with foolishness. Remember now, we're moving from foolish to wise. But physical discipline will drive it far away. So, so powerful. Proverbs 13, 24. Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them. Okay. I wanna demonstrate for you, in fact, I need a volunteer. Anybody need to be disciplined real quick? <laughs> right? And so I just wanna, I wanna give you a couple keys if you wanna take this challenge. Again, man, listen, this is your life as a parent. You can, God, that's the beauty of God's free will. He's given you free will to do life how you want. I'm trying to just help equip you from the Bible what it looks like to raise children, to love, and to discipline them. And so, and 
and it was only by God's grace that we learned this. Denise and I were in New York. We had just gotten pregnant with twins. We got to hang out with this godly couple that had a toddler named Hannah, and we watched them do exactly what I'm about to teach you right now. And a couple keys, number one, when your child is disobeying, getting out of line, make it crystal clear and give them choice. So here's how it would be. Blaze, Zion, what you're doing right now is not honoring to God or your parents. You have the choice. You can stop right now or you can continue and then you would choose the rod. It's your choice. And you guys are laughing at me and you're, but that's exactly how you say it. You don't heighten your voice. You, you don't get the vein down the middle. Just love. And you give them, listen, the power of choice. To be unclear is to be unkind. Give them the choice. That's what God's given us. And I would look at them and, and, and tragically, especially early on, more than I would have liked to, they'd continue to, to do it. And I'd look at them and I'd be like, Blaze well, hey, Zion, you know, I gave you that choice unfortunately, you chose the rod. Can you go get it? And I would literally have them go get the rod, this wood cheese cutting board, grab it and come to me. And number two, make sure that you represent the heart of the father correctly. This is key. There'd be some times where they'd be doing something real crazy. Typically, it was Blaze. I'm just joking. It was both of them. And I'm just messing with you, buddy. And there would be times, honestly, where I didn't have enough self-control at the moment, and I, I was gonna misrepresent God if I would've took the rod in my hand, and I would have to go to my bedroom, pause and pray, ask for God to give me self-control and an even temper, go back and be like, do you understand why you're getting the rod? And, <laughs> yes, Dad, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'd put him over my, my knee, and again, I would, and number three, key to rod, make it sting. And this is where it hurts so bad. I don't want to make it sting. Or I'm messed up from my past because someone abused me, and so I'm going the opposite way. Can I tell you, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about, we're talking about let it sting. By the way, if you're late in the game and you have a teenage girl and you're like, the rod isn't gonna do it, I'm, she'll call the police or whatever. And here's, here's what I would say. <laughs> I would say this, but you still gotta make it sting. How do you do it? Get creative. And you can, there's a variety of ways. That's not a bad way, but let's say she's 14, she's having a bad attitude, and you just lovingly, again, let's go through it. Sweetheart, right now, what you're doing is your attitude. You're not honoring God and honoring your parents. Um, I'm giving you a choice. Please change that, or you will choose having one outfit for the next two weeks, and I'm gonna clear your closet. So, but here's, here's what you're doing. You're making it sting, but you're giving clarity. Sweetheart, I love you. Please turn from that and make the right decision. And then you follow up with it and, and, you, and you make it sting. And, and it was wild because all the time I would then, after I'd you know, give him the, the rod and we'd hug and I'd pray for him real quick. God loves you. Daddy loves you. Make better decisions. Ready? Let's go. And we'd move forward. And I'm telling you, man, that is the number one thing that has changed the trajectory of our children's lives. Tons of love, tons of discipline. Even when I didn't want to, man, especially early on, you got that like stubborn, like, like self-willed ch child. You're like, I'd really? If you do it consistently, which is number three, consistently early on, it gets less and less as you move forward. Is anybody with me at this point? Are you still, are you learning? A couple people are? Okay. And let me just speak to children real quick. If you're listening to this, I want you to jot down a verse as well. It's Proverbs 3, verse 11. It's actually verse 11 and 12. My child, this is God speaking to you. Don't reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. Really, it's God through your parents trying to, again, this is a powerful painting a picture, moving from foolish to wise. They're helping you. It's God through them. Don't be upset when they correct you. Look at 12. For the Lord corrects those he loves. Not he hates. He corrects those he loves, just as the father corrects a child in whom 
he delights. Don't you wanna delight your children? You don't just wanna put up with them, man. You wanna delight in your children. Okay, number three, and finally, this is key, consistency. Write it down, consistency. Ephesians, or excuse me, Hebrews 13, eight says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it's tons of love, tons of discipline, and then we're consistent with it, not just with the love and the discipline, but with our lifestyle. And, and by God's grace, as I'm connected to Jesus every day, spirit, scriptures, and I'm modeling it, and it's consistent. Can I just say this? Nothing throws children off more than inconsistency. One day, it's like strict as all get out, and then the next day, it's like, man, I'm tired of this. Yeah, whatever you wanna do. Make your own bologna sandwich and uh, do whatever you want. Well, it's this inconsistent, and now it sets up these kids, and they're like, what do I expect? And I wrote this in my notes, and let this sink in. Our inconsistency is what creates their insecurity, instability, and lack of identity. The opposite is true when it's consistent and they know what to expect and there's tons of love. I believe in you, man. You're awesome. Listen, right now what you're, not, you're doing is not honoring to, and it's consistent. Something changes. And you begin painting this picture and over time, not easy, but worth it. Proverbs 20, verse seven says, the godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children who follow them. What's the key to consistency, by the way? So simple, John 15, five. Because you're like, dude, this is so much. I don't know how I'm gonna figure it out. And I came up through parenting that painted a picture that was completely inconsistent to God's way. I don't know how this is all gonna happen. I don't know what to do. Can I give you this, this very, very simple verse, key to consistency, John 15, five. Jesus said, yes, I'm the vine, you are the branches, those who what? Those who remain in me. That's the key. <coughs> and I and them will produce much fruit. <coughs> Pause for effect. <coughs> for apart from me, you can do nothing. And that includes parenting. I'll close with a story because I want you to know what I'm sharing with you is not something I conjured up in my own strength. It is not because I think I'm awesome. Certainly not a perfect parent. If you get that message, please forgive me. It's not what I'm saying. It's only by God's grace that I learned this through the word, that I gave my life to Christ, that I learned this, and then I saw it modeled. Praise God for Kevin and Jamie Swain and how they showed us. And our goal was to bring people into our home to share with them, to model for them what this looks like. And over the years, you know, over 30 people came to live with us because we wanted people to see a model what it looks like, how we could do this. And two of these individuals that live with us are two of our pastors on staff right now. And just a couple months ago, my wife called them, we were getting depressed because we were like, dude, I'm not, a, my kids are out of the house, I have no purpose, I'm not, I'm not parenting, so we need to steal kids, can we steal yours, you know, and, and the first thing we did, we took all the girls to Disney on Ice, and I'm like, what am I, if I lost my mind, I'm like, it's a dude with all these girls and like princess dresses and whatnot and ice skating, you know, it's like, what am I doing? But can I just tell you, it was so fun to be with these children that their parents are painting a picture and a paradigm for them that is fantastic. Man, we had a blast. And I didn't have to worry about, like, dude, we literally said to them, hey, um, we're, you know, I forget, no, it was the boys. I'll, I'll get to that. So the girls were just so fun. We had just an awesome time. And then... <laughs> I think it was a week later, we, we took all the dude, the, kid, the little boys, to the monster truck show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, we, dude, to see these kids, I just kept on looking at the parents. Man, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. They were such a joy to be with. 
it wasn't like, ah, oh, like trying to tell them something. They're like, whatever, PT, I'm gonna do my own thing. Like they, were, they had a ball and we had pizza after. And it was cool because my wife, this is true, looked at the kids and said, hey, we're about to walk into the monster truck show and they're, they're gonna try to sell you everything. If none of you ask us to buy a, a truck, I got a special prize for you when we get in the car. And it's like, we'll put your parenting to the test right now, see what y'all got. And I'm telling you, these kids, it was so fun. I mean, we had one negotiate and was like, now, if I just like really like what they're selling, but I don't ask, I mean, do I still get the prize, you know? Kid seven, like, this guy's gonna be a bomb salesman. He's amazing. And, and I'm, dude, it was so fun. The truck, you know, they're doing their crazy stuff. We went to have pizza. And they get in the car, they're like, did we, did we pass? Did we get, did we get, did we get the, the prize? And Denise had all these monster cars ready for them. And I just, I was, in my heart, it was one of the proudest moments in my life as a pastor, seeing the, these families pastor and develop their kids God's way. It's amazing to see what you guys are doing. Our job, our privilege as a parent, it's super powerful. Crazy purpose. And this paradigm shift, tons of love, tons of discipline, consistency throughout can change generations if we'll ask God to give us the grace to apply it. Amen? God, thank you for this word so specific in this season. And God, I pray for every individual here. No matter what season of life we're in, some regret, some joy, some in the middle, some overwhelmed, some had a bad picture, some had a great picture. It's one beautiful family that are coming to you and saying, God, continue to teach us. There's always more to learn. There's always more to grow in every season of our life. The past is the past. What are you inviting us into in the future? How can we help? Maybe we're a grandparent. How can we help as a grandparent these days? Encourage our grown children, our grandchildren. How can we love? How can we discipline? How can we be consistent and model? I want to abide in the vine, stay connected to you for your glory. In Jesus' name. Let's stand.